Okay, so we have uh, participations. We can start with the webinar. Very good afternoon to all the participants of the webinar and a very good afternoon to our guest speakers. I welcome you all in today's webinar on our topic, Industry-Led Effective Training Under the National Apprenticeship Scheme. So my name is Deep Mala. I'm Manager, Industry Connects and Placements in RCPSTC. I'm the moderator for the session today. So uh, we all know that though it is very common, training improves efficiency and productivity of the employees. Well-trained employees show both quality and quantity performance. Uh, there is a very uh, less wastage of time, money and resources for any kind of manufacturing unit if the employees are properly trained, well-trained. So apprenticeship training is considered to be one of the most efficient ways as it provides an opportunity to get trained while working. Apprenticeship training is a process of enhancing the skills, capability, and knowledge of the employees for doing a particular job. And hence, most effective way to develop skilled manpower for the country. To take the discussion ahead, we have our panel here that we have invited from the most renowned companies of the rubber sector. I would like to invite my first guest speaker from the industry, Apollo Tires Limited. A very warm welcome, sir. <clears throat> so Apollo Tire Limited is an Indian multinational tire manufacturing company. It is headquartered in Gurgaon, Haryana, incorporated in year 1972. Its first plant was commissioned in Kerala. The company now has five manufacturing units in India, one in Netherlands, and one in Hungary. So Apollo Tire always promotes talent and recognizes it. It's a 24 by 7 working environment company. So we have uh, Colonel Nilesh Lal today as a guest speaker here. Welcome, sir. Thanks, thanks, Dikmala. So um, Mr. Nilesh is a uh, divisional head HR in Apollo Tires Limited. He's got more than 25 years of varied experiences. He has worked with Indian Army also as a colonel. And then he got around 10 years of rich experience along with the companies like Wipro. And now he's working with Apollo Tires in the diverse area of HR. So during his experience in the corporate sector, his major contribution was in, uh, in the aspects of CSR diversity and sustainability in domestic as well as in international locations. He's currently working as a divisional head HR in Apollo Tires since the year 2016. So most welcome, sir, here in our session today. Thanks. Thanks, Deepala. Thanks a lot. Thanks for the introduction. Yeah. So uh, the very first question that goes to you as an industry person, and uh, since Apollo is also associated with a rubber sector for hiring the apprentices under the apprenticeship promotion scheme now. So uh, what is the ease that you find in the online process of hiring apprentices for the industries? Uh, so uh, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you, Deep Mala, for the introduction. And of course, RSDC for giving the opportunity. And hopefully at the end of this webinar, we all will be educated on the effective utilization of apprentices. So I shall be giving you my inputs from the industry perspective so that we learn how to optimize on this particular resource. So uh, before getting onto the question, I would, you know, again, from the industry perspective and for all the viewers, I would like to give you certain key benefits which we have felt as an industry uh, by hiring this resource. So uh, the first positive thing is that uh, we currently have stopped hiring all blue collar workmen, right? So, so we are totally now uh, taking on apprentices on board and they, gradually we are inducting them into this particular domain. Uh, the second aspect which I wanted to flag off is about the attrition part. So initially, yes, uh, uh, there is attrition, uh, primarily uh, because, you know, the apprentices are directly out of colleges and schools. 
So it takes them some time to get acclimatized to the work environment. And of course, uh, I'm in Gujarat, so we are the hub of manufacturing activity. So uh, a lot of, uh, you know, since they are apprentice, whenever there is a, you know, a vacancy in one of our like industries, these people attract and join those uh, you know, industries as a regular employer em employees. And of course, uh, you know, in the past one year, the, the times have been uncertain with COVID. So obviously the attrition rates have been higher. So that is one aspect, but subsequently I'm assuming that once we regularize these guys, uh, these individuals from apprentice to regular employees, they would have already understood the way the industry works and then the attrition levels will be minuscule. Uh, the other, of course, is the cost factor since we are paying stipend. Uh, that is another key issue. Uh, productivity wise, I feel that uh, within three to six months, uh, you know, they are semi trained and they can deliver as per the production norms. Uh, they are not governed under the labor laws and they are not permanent employees. So these are some of the key benefits. Uh, now, getting on to the specific question which Deepala had asked. Uh, now, there is an online portal, and I'm sure all of us are aware of that. Uh, so, in that online portal, so that is very, uh, you know, it's very effective, that portal. So, first and foremost, uh, you know, the contract creation process, uh, any candidate, uh, he has to register himself on the apprentice portal, and he gets a registration number, and uh, he has to activate that registration number through his email ID. Thereafter, the company also being registered on the portal searches for the suitable candidate and then a contract is issued to the suitable candidate. Uh, that is, an offer is made. Once the contract is accepted by the candidate, then the contract number is generated and the, uh, you know, the apprentice period starts. Uh, the other benefits, of course, is that, uh, you know, the... Uh, the certification is also available online. So if there is a particular course, depending on the duration from six months to three years, whenever the duration is over uh, and uh, you know the assessment has been done, the certificate is generated online, which can be handed over to the individual. And last and not the least is that the stipend can also be paid online. But currently what we are doing is that we are directly paying into the accounts of the, uh, of the apprentice and keeping the apprentice advisor informed about the same. So I think, uh, I hope that answers the question, Deepmala. Yes, I'm sure. So uh, that's the ease of online. Registration is online. Contract making is online. Reimbursement for the industries is also online and of course when you start paying through the nsdc payment gate it becomes rather more easier because there is more documentation which is required so yeah definitely so uh, coming to the next point nilesh ji uh, not only an ease of online uh, the courses that we have designed uh, that is also customized and at uh, for the as per the industry requirement, we can give the flexibility. So, what is your say into the flexibility of the customization of courses by combining multiple QPs that we can design in the courses, and we can use it as a single module for the candidate, so that the candidate also you know kind of uh, sticks with the organization for a long run. And do you think that also gives a little push to the attrition rate, maybe it goes down with the help of this. Okay, so uh, so just to, uh, you know, just give a brief insight. So uh, we uh, in Apollo have, uh, you know, created four modules, uh, which are now listed on the site. So just to name the module, one is tire molding and curing, extrusion and calendaring, inspection and final finish and tire building. So just to make everyone understand, uh, you know, there are national occupational standards, the NOS, which is basically the standard of performance and knowledge to carry out a particular job. So uh, we uh, identified the NOS from the sites, which are relevant to the modules we are looking at. And with the assistance of the RSDC, these NOS were grouped under the qualification packs. So just to give an example, for tire molding and uh, curing, we had uh, four QPs and there are 29 NOS. So currently uh, we are running all these four modules effectively 
and uh, currently they are non naps because uh, so we are in the process with the assistance of rsdc to get them validated by the nsqc so that they can become naps courses so the entire uh, you know the entire process was you know uh, it was well documented we were assisted at all levels and that's how we could uh, you know immediately with the assistance of the RC, rsdc create these modules and like i said we are running them effectively now yeah uh, deepala anything yeah. else you would like me to add on this or yeah is is it helping you to uh, at least push a little the uh, attrition rate within the company as usually in the rubber sector due to the environmental factors the attrition rate is really high as usual in all the different manufacturing units so so attrition is uh, so first and foremost is when these modules are created uh, so we have got three years modules and uh, you know the uh, initial uh, we have the basic training and then the is the ojt so uh, what is very relevant is that these modules uh, are you know uh, very intensive uh, and the person who is undergoing these modules is uh, totally occupied and he is learning a lot of skills so which is making him very employable so yes uh, that way a person is fully occupied but like i said since uh, there are a lot of tie industries in and around gujarat so obviously uh, whenever a person gets a regular job so he definitely will move so that in a way i would look at it as positively that he becomes yeah. more employable and he feels the confidence and the other industry feels the confidence in picking him up that's perfectly right yes of course not only theoretical concept but he's practically sound also and he has got working experience and uh, such a rich experience so he can show it and can get permanent job so how is the hiring pattern in apollo tires how do you take like and uh, if you have spoken about the four modules that we have so um, normally how many people have you hired from using these modules as well under apprenticeship so i'll give you the uh, figures i have them with me so uh, typically we are hiring in the uh, you know the 10th and 12th class uh, and iti uh, apprentice and also the diploma and recently we have started hiring the degree apprentice in addition to the trade apprentice so for the diploma we have currently on roll 155 uh, and uh, for the uh, 10th 12th and iti we have 379 and for the uh, uh, the trade apprentice we have currently 23 on roll so uh, okay. so the cumulative figure is 557 as on date Uh, which is uh, you know we are authorized fifteen percent, which as per our current hit count is six uh, seventy five. So currently we are at five fifty seven, and we are definitely looking forward to reaching this uh, figure of six seventy five in the near future. Uh, just to flag off what I had already mentioned, the attrition rates uh, for the diploma is approximately annualized attrition is forty two percent. For the tenth, twelfth, and ITI is sixty percent, and for the trade is thirty percent. so this is the current yeah. status of the uh, you know the, uh, the the apprentices which we have picked up in apollo mm -hmm. yeah makes sense like and um, do you i mean since you have hired so many apprentices also and uh, into trades like uh, you're saying that you have been hiring uh, under the optional trade as well and uh, with the help of diploma holders and 10 12 candidates so do you have any such case study in the apprentices being hired using the job roles and that can be a career progression for him a role model for others uh okay so deepala so what we have done is we started hiring in august 2020 so uh, you know under these the scheme under this modules which we had created so the senior most apprentice who's with us is approximately one and a half years into the system right so uh, just to give you a, a input so obviously uh, we are paying these apprentices far higher than what the stipend is prescribed by the industry or as per the naps norms so just to give you a input that uh, though the uh, you know the engineering apprentice is supposed to pay be paid 9000 we are paying them 20000 right so the basic idea is that if you are putting in so much of effort into an individual 
we would want if they if they shape up we would want to train them and also absorb them subsequently so that is the intent and uh, we are also treating them as regular workmen in all aspects including uh, you know giving them uh, performance based special recognition etc so that they feel aligned to the company per se the uh, you know so we have had uh, you know so while the attrition i told you the reasons for the attrition there are genuine reasons uh, you know some go for higher education some have family issues some are joining the neighboring industry etc etc but there are genuine yeah. reasons right so so we don't have any uh, you know like bulk people leaving so they are all happy with the work environment they are happy right. with the learning process and uh, as per the norms which we have selected and as per the modules we have created so we are undergoing a you know a basic training where we we cover all key aspects uh, hr related about you know right from gender sensitization to person with disability sensitization to health and safety which has all the you know the behavioral based safety emergency fire fighting etc reporting and recording information security the theory you know the hr initiatives because we align them to the company's uh, culture with mission and vision and the core values so that they get aligned to the company thought process uh, we take them through first state uh, you know quality uh, all the specs the customer specific requirements so so it's a very intensive training which we make them undergo so at uh, and we have a defined skill matrix and we carry out a skill assessment once in 6 months and the aim is to make them semi trained in the first 3 to 6 months and thereafter they uh, subsequently after 6 months they should be able to operate a machine on independently without supervision okay so so far uh, i think we have had a good run uh, like i said uh, the senior most people are one and a half years old and uh, the word of mouth is carrying on we are getting a lot of people who want to join and uh, i think uh, th- that's it yeah so i'm sure this kind of a training will help them in the overall growth as a person individually also and also helps them into the career thank you nileshi and uh, let me now invite our next uh, speaker from uh, jk tire and industries limited so jk tire and industries uh, is one of india's foremost tire manufacturers and it's uh, amongst the top 25 manufacturers in the world from the past four decades jk tire has been at the forefront in driving the innovation and excellence in the tire industries and uh, through the introduction of uh, ground breaking technologies and products that cater to the diverse business segments in the automobile industry so we have uh, mr s maheshwaran is a senior manager a learning and development department of the chennai tire plant so uh, mr maheshwaran uh, Thank you so much for joining today. Thanks, Deep Mala. So, uh, just to an introduction of Mr. Maheshwaran, he is PG in training and development from ISTD, and he has a professional degree in mechanical engineering. He has rich experience of sixteen years in learning and development, capacity building, and organizational development interventions. is currently associated with JK Tire Industries in the learning and development department and uh, he is associated with other professional forums also like QCFI ISTD so uh, thank you sir for joining and taking out your valuable experience will surely help them all the audience out here with respect to the learning and development need within the industry so yes uh, yes very much no Definitely. So my first question uh, with you would be in the domain of apprenticeship scheme only. So under the apprenticeship scheme, the candidate gets skilled training in the industry, on the job training. So what is the major benefit that you think, or the difference that you find when the fresher is being hired directly from ITI University by the industries with no skilling experience? or maybe any kind of a formal training being given on to the industries and when the candidate is being hired uh, through the apprenticeship scheme after having a kind of on the job training so what is the difference as in you will find in the overall candidate maybe if he applies somewhere yeah thanks deepmala for the opportunity 
and uh, i'll just uh, explain with that uh, background uh, so these uh, candidates who are we are hiring they are straight from the academic background and uh, so what they will be looking for is that uh, their personality development then the skill development and their career development and when they come to the factory they will be exposed to uh, practical training where they will get the opportunity to work in the manufacturing environment and it is a great exposure for them to work in the manufacturing environment as well as they will get the real time uh, updates about the technological updates what is happening in and around the industry and uh, the technological changes everything they will be coming to know as well as they will get a chance to implement the learnings whatever they have did during their academic part and uh, coming to the question so the difference between hiring the uh, new apprentice as well as hiring from the existing per person so these new per, per apprentices they will be more willing to learn so this learning process will uh, what you call will also will help us because they will uh, during the process of learning they will ask a lot of doubts and it will throw us a lot of insights to develop some create or some new suggestions and ideas and even some uh, what you call a uh, beautiful projects where we can have uh, what you call under cost saving as well as the uh, quality improvement projects and they'll be more eager to work and their willingness to work will, uh, will always will be resulting in the high productivity and uh, it also will improve the efficiency and uh, they will be producing the quality product also and it is very easy to mold actually according to our need and the skill set what we require when we hire uh, people fresh from the college so it is easy to mold them according to our need so these are all the things uh, i will be very different uh, when we hiring from the uh, existing apprentices right sir right so uh, as we discussed with mr nalesh as well so you know that the core structure uh, is customizable it can be customized as per the requirement of the industry <laughs> so what is uh, the kind of program do you suggest to be suitable for the skill training under the apprenticeship promotion scheme as per your industrial experience yeah yes so because customization is essential part because the technology is changing and it is evolving uh month on month and year on year and day by day so uh, what i feel is uh, that customized courses can be given to improve their hand skills especially on the maintenance and troubleshooting where right now all the courses it is targeting towards the production field or the operator production operator so we need to focus more on the automation courses apart from their regular job roles so the automation we can even include uh, what i can say uh, related to uh, maintenance and we can even uh, include the basic plc programming and hma panel training and the low cost automation by using pneumatics and hydraulics so these all are the job roles we can even uh, uh, include as a new role uh, and we can customize and create the new courses because all the course existing course will be targeting uh, for uh, as a production operator so this maintenance because always i believe that maintenance will be the heart of the Uh, any industry so we can even uh, create new job roles as well as we can customize create a new courses to develop the maintenance of the engineering part both in terms of your electrical as well as the mechanical and in the long term run uh, we can even include uh, uh, courses for improving the quality of the products like uh, developing their problem solving skills and uh, what i can say we can include your problem solving uh, uh, skills by including uh, on the a qc story approach and as we can develop people as a problem solvers also we can include those courses right. also and uh, my main take is so we have to include many courses related to maintenance uh, field also right so majorly focusing on the maintenance part automation quality of product and problem solving is what your suggestion towards new courses yes yeah. yes yes how do you find the efficiency of the candidate as uh, in jk tire also certain apprentices are being picked up last recently so those who are working along with you under the apprenticeship scheme so how is the efficiency of those candidates see as uh, this scheme is intended to we have to improve the skill and knowledge of the trainees and their application of knowledge is very important so we are importing them on the lot of technical knowledge actually uh, when they join uh, we are giving them the initial induction training or so after that uh, uh, on the job training so during a part of initial induction itself they have been trained on various aspects like your company rules policies then um, behavioral based safety then uh, product knowledge and process knowledge 
then quality maintenance uh, as well as the uh, basics of your problem solving everything is been told them as a part of their initial induction once they get uh, get their knowledge and uh, well, they participate in all kind of forums here we encourage uh, uh, participation of apprentices even in all party uh, employee engagement activities also so they participate in, in a suggestion scheme cases and we do have a, a many forums for employee engagement such as your arts and sports and they also will be participating as a part of our uh, celebrations um, we conduct uh, for quality month safety month and uh, as well as for your energy day celebrations environment day celebration they also will be participating in large numbers and they will be participating in quiz competition exhibition and skit competition and all so uh, we uh, find that their efficiency is really high and this particular uh, scheme uh, is really helping them uh, what do you call in terms of developing their uh, skills as not only that and improving the efficiency of them uh, which is helping them what do you call and uh, because of that uh, the output or the productivity is really high and uh, the retention uh, is really high and uh, their participation is really high and Uh, if we develop them uh, as per the right direction, if we can mold them according to the need, and obviously they will be contributing in a larger way, and uh, it will be help. It is uh, it is helping us, and uh, they, I find that this scheme is really helping for improving the efficiency of all the trainees. Okay, so that's really sounds good. Yeah. So, would you like to share any case study of any such apprentices working in the industry who has gained the knowledge and which has helped him to transform his personality over a period of time? Yes, definitely. So, I I can quote uh, one of the trainee. Uh, what uh, he after joining, he got his initial induction and training, and he expressed his interest in the field of manufacturing excellence. So, manufacturing excellence, we do have. Uh, Uh, what do you call uh, many activities such as your five S audit? Then um, so we are a TPM certified company, and we are a Deming uh, Deming uh, practicing company. We are into the Deming journey right now. So we'll be applying for in 2023 the Deming prize. And uh, so where there is a large scope of uh, uh, what do you call all the process improvement and in terms of your reduction on uh, quality defect and working on zero defect and zero break and zero accidents. So these all are we are working. So he expressed his interest. In uh, working uh, for uh, learning himself for uh, manufacturing excellence department, so we trained him on five uh, S, Kaizen, and TPM, and TPM basics, and all the problem solving tools, including QC stories and root cause analysis, and your Y V analysis. So he got a lot of exposure, and uh, he what do you call he contributed a lot during our our plant is recently certified for a TPM consistency award. Uh, so okay. we. Wow. Yeah, so we observed him on our role, and we converted him as our on-role job uh, as an employee, and uh, he contributed a lot for our TPM consistency award uh, journey, which we received uh, last month only. And uh, so we we got even uh, recognized, okay, uh, before his contribution. What we did, we awarded him as a part of our R&D team, and with a cash voucher and a certificate. So I can uh, quote this example uh, from this team. As well as I can quote one more uh, example uh, who joined as apprenticeship trainee and uh, he, uh, he he got some exposure in terms of learning AutoCAD in his college days and he did a course on AutoCAD. So after joining, he was asking the scope for him to enrich further on the uh, design as, as well as the draftsman post. So we recognized him as well as and uh, with the intensive training on uh, the AutoCAD, we sent him outside for the training. And uh, we, we regularly we used to give this uh, drafting work to the outside. So then what we did is, so we took him and uh, we developed him, and uh, now he is there and he is doing all the draftsman work and he is really happy. And uh, he also is absorbed under our role. I can say these all are the transformations which. We That's really to. nice. Huh? Good yeah, to hear all, all this that. because yeah, finally gradually they are getting good placements also, and that is a real devastating change in their career map. Yes, it is actually this particular scheme is helping them as well as helping uh, the employer also uh, for uh, some kind of mutual benefit. This particular scheme is helping us. Okay, that's really great. Uh, thank you, sir, for the industry perspective on building the skilled manpower using NAP scheme. Not only for your own organization, but of course, it is helping the other industries also to get the skilled manpower. 
So the participants can uh, write their questions if they have any questions from the industry speaker in the chat box. So we'll surely try to cater those industry um, perspective on their thought process. Also, um, this time we have uh, created a small polling for the participants who have joined us in the session. This polling is consisting of uh, questions for the audience and uh, this polling questions will be in front of you. So I request all the participants to kindly take the appropriate answer in the polling questions. So I think you can see the question right in front of you. So you'll have to just take the answer and go to the next question. All the participants are requested to fill up the answers to the questions, go to the next question and finally submit the polling. So we have one minute left. So almost 50% people have already participated. We'll wait for another one minute before the poll ends. Okay, last 30 seconds. Okay, thank you for your participation. So, here is the result. The first question, most of the people are saying that they are convinced with the fact that apprenticeship scheme serving the purpose of skilled manpower as per the requirement of the industry. Almost all people saying that the current structure of courses developed under the NAPS program benefiting the training needs. And people are convinced with the fact that the online apprenticeship portal provides an ease to the industry for the registration and reimbursement process. And 81% uh, of people think that the candidates pursuing this assessment, uh, pursuing apprenticeship must have an online assessment during the apprenticeship program. Okay, thank you so much for your participation. So now let me invite our next guest from NSTC, uh, Mr. Yen Ebin. He is a consultant apprenticeship National Skill Development Council. Mr. Yen has joined NSTC in year 2019 as a consultant. Mm -hmm engagement. He's previously worked for German International Corporation and German Chamber of Commerce in Western Balkan countries to set up apprenticeship scheme with employers and advise chambers on organizational development as well. He also worked as a network organizer for UNESCO and Univoc 
as researcher for the German Federal Institute of Vocational Education of Training and university lecturer and trainer in continuing vocational. <clears throat> so his main areas of interest are the promotion of apprenticeship, the law of skilling and vocational education, and the internationalization of VET. I welcome Mr. Yen for the session today and um, to kindly elaborate on the apprenticeship scheme for the benefit of the industry by customizing, extending the new job roles and creating the BTPs, which is basic training center within the shop floor of the industries. Welcome, sir. Okay, thank you, Dimara, for the introduction. And then thank you also to the previous speakers for shedding such a bright light on best industry practices. Dimala, we have a couple of slides if you can put them on. Sure, so. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. There we go. And, uh, and the, the question that was put to me is, um, or, or the title, I must say better for, for this, uh, a presentation, Apprenticeship and Effective Employment Pathway for Employers. And I put a question mark to it and make it a rhetorical question, which however, I intend to answer in the affirmative by saying and arguing that yes, apprenticeship is an effective employment pathway for employers. I also want to show you that it's um, not only effective, but it is also cost efficient. And if I, if I go back to the poll that we just did, um, uh, of course, the middle answer of the first question is the right one, as it would not always be an effective and an efficient pathway for all situations, but we will see that uh, um, in the particular circumstance of uh, <clears throat> mid to long term HR recruitment strategies, apprenticeship has its place, but it would not be so suitable for any immediate need of filling um, a vacancy, but we'll get to that later on. Um, at <clears throat> NSDC, we did a survey more than a year ago in 2020 with Dahlberg International Consultants. Not a huge one, but uh, a groundbreaking one, at least in India, where we wanted to know what um, industries or companies' views are on apprenticeship, and we surveyed 100 companies. And the heartening result was that more than two thirds of all companies saw more value than cost in apprenticeship. So that's the net positive value that 67% of companies see in apprenticeship. And 57% of the companies that were surveyed even saw long-term benefits um, of having apprentices. And the uh, most important one that was mentioned was the very high retention rate, which was attributed to the, <clears throat> to the loyalty that an apprenticeship relationship creates between um, employer and employee. At any rate, across sectors, the ratio um, of benefit to cost was seen uh, 1.3 times higher to 1.9 times higher. And the um, probably most important statistics or results from this survey was that 60 to 80%, the vast majority of apprentices reach productivity about halfway through their apprenticeship. Very important. And about 20 to 50% um, are eventually absorbed into permanent employment. Again, this varies across sectors, but um, if anyone should say that this is rather a low number, I want to point out here that um, it is common practice to engage apprentices above and beyond the immediate human resources need of a particular company that allows the possibility to create a pool of employee um, of, <clears throat> of personnel that is suitable for full-time employment and to replace um, to replace people that are leaving the company or that is the basis for, for future expansion. Um, any of the other apprentices who do not get absorbed in that company that has trained them with the good training that they have received will find it very easy um, to find um, good and permanent work um, in the labor market. We may go on to the next slide, Dipana. Um, and here I want to place apprenticeship for us in the context of, uh, of HR recruitment strategies, and it is commonly placed um, 
as one as one of the internal strategies. Of course, you have external strategies where the recruitment comes from the labor market, and there are internal strategies. Um, the usual ones are internal transfers and promotions, but apprenticeship is one of them. And uh, in India, under the legal stipulations that we have here, it is. Um, of course, limited to 15% of the total employee strength. One of the uh, legal requirements is that 2.5% to a maximum of 15% um, of the employee strength may be apprentices. But it establishes this internal pool of skilled candidates for replacement um, as well as for expansion. It significantly reduces the cost of um, external recruitment and also eliminates the many errors that may um, occur in external recruitment. It results in high productivity. Um, we've seen that the majority of apprentices reach full productivity about halfway through their apprenticeship and high retainment, which, is, which has been dramatically illustrated as a matter of fact in the first COVID wave when in many industries, the migrant labor has left their um, places of employment. However, apprentices being typically re recruited locally have stayed, um, which I think gave a big boost and a great recognition to apprenticeship across India as a consequence also. So we place it in the context of the internal strategies. However, it's also a little bit of a hybrid because initially, of course, the apprentices are recruited externally, but not from a labor market, but usually believers um, that come as freshers into apprenticeship. Flip to the next um, slide. <clears throat> and uh, the 15% rule that I have already mentioned uh, comes in here. Two and a half percent to 15% is the bandwidth um, within which um, industries may bring in apprentices. Um, there, are other, there are other polls or, or marks for any, for any um, establishment that has more than 30 employees. Um, taking in apprentices is mandatory. That's the law, however, it's not universally known across India, nor is it strictly enforced, but the government has a policy of um, um, of incentivizing apprenticeship rather than enforcing it. For the category of four to 30 employee strength, it is optional to bring in apprentices. And for any establishment that has less than three apprentices, it's uh, any three employees, it's not allowed to take in apprentices, which may be seen as a bit unfortunate because it puts the MSMEs, especially the micro among the MSMEs at a disadvantage here. Establishment um, and apprentice enter a contract. So from a legal point of view, an, um, an apprenticeship is a contractual relationship where the main duty of course of the employer is to train the apprentice and where the main duty or responsibility of the apprentice is to learn the trade and also to become productive as soon as possible. Um, one of the contractual requirements is that uh, the establishment pays a stipend and that goes across a range of 5,000 to 9,000 rupees. We'll look at it in uh, one of the upcoming slides. But first we take, ah, here it comes already. Okay, very good. Um, 5,000 is the minimum and 9,000 is the prescribed minimum amount of a stipend for those apprentices who are graduate apprentices um, or degree apprentices. So um, the, um, seven, the seven categories of apprenticeship stipend reflect educational achievement. Um, Whereas formerly the stipend was pegged to the minimum wage in the respective state, it is believed that this is a more rational and a, and a fairer system. I need to emphasize that these are minimum amounts, which means that any establishment 
is of course free to pay in excess of the prescribed minimum amounts um, and also include throw in any other tangible or non-tangible benefits that we might think of, which maybe um, a free meal, a canteen privilege, uh, cost of transportation reimbursed, things like that. However, apprentices do not come under Providence Fund and they don't come under ESIC employee insurance, which um, some consider as being unfortunate and not helping to upvalue the image of apprenticeship, but it is the um, it is the law, it's the labor law that stands in the way here. And uh, the government of India and the parliament have a little bit of work to do to get this sorted. Um, I want to get now to the flexibility um, that we have spoken about. And that is, um, or the advantages of apprenticeship training, including flexibility, um, cost advantage, um, and a management advantage. This is how I like to, to, to frame the advantages of apprenticeship training and the flexibility and previous speakers have spoken about it also, does come in through the instrument of optional trades, which means that since 2016, when it was legislated, but actually from 2018 onwards, it was um, implemented there is the possibility to do optional trades, that is to design a course of apprenticeship as per the needs of the industry. The cost advantage comes in um, because through different instruments, the government of India contributes to the cost of apprenticeships. We have NAPS, which is the predominant one, the National an Apprenticeship Promotion Scheme, but there are also two other schemes called NATS and NIMS, and I will Let's take a quick look at them in the end so that we can compare them and, uh, and understand them. And these come together with CSR, which means to say that <clears throat> um, any effort towards apprenticeship, which goes above the legal minimum legal requirement to hire at least 2.5% of the workforce as apprentices, can count against CSR or can be booked under CSR. And that includes stipends, obviously, but it also includes such things as um, extra benefits that are given, that includes such things as the um, uh, setting up of a training center uh, um, and any other directly to the apprenticeship related cost. And finally, we have management advantage because the administration and organization of an apprenticeship can be sourced out to a specialized institution, which is called third party aggregator or abbreviated TPA. Um, next one, please. The flexibility advantage, designated and optional trades. Designated trades, and I'll show you this for um, comparison. Uh, for, for the um, being able to make the comparison are the ones that are designated and notified by central government and traditionally we find them in um, technical occupations. Here the courses are designed by the Central Staff Training and Research Institute CISTARI and then approved by National Council for Vocational Education and Training NCVET um, and then implemented by the Directorate General of Training which is a unit under the Ministry of Skills Development and Entrepreneurism. And NAPS is available for the designated trades. And now I come to the flexible one, to the optional trades. Those are the trades that can be designed by a created, by an industry, by an employer, or by a group of employers, simply because they find it relevant to their specific needs. It can be technical and non-technical. And the traditional, We've had them immediately in services in IT, but now they are also coming up very strong in traditional industries, and into which I <laughs> would include the industries represented by uh, the rubber, <laughs> chemicals, and plastic sector skill council. They're implemented by NSDC through the um, apprenticeship division in NSDC, of which I'm a part. And NAPS is also available, but the courses must be aligned to the National Skills Qualification Framework. And I mentioned this, I also think it is important. 
because the course, if it is linked to a level in the eight level national skills qualification framework, would be a shorthand um, information about the worth of the course. So if the person um, has qualified under an optional trade and leaves the company to go to the labor market, there needs to be some kind of a reference and the NSQF provides that. And now we can look, and I believe you have a prepared stigma there, um, the list of optional trades, job roles that have been created and approved so far. And they are for NAPs and non-NAPs. See, non-NAPs means um, that they have not been and need not be approved by the National Skills um, Qualification uh, Council under NCVET because they are not pegged to NAPs. And the minority is non-NAPs, the majority is non-NAPs. These go um, across rubber, plastics, and chemicals, I understand. And they show you the, the total bandwidth of options and the things that can be created if industry decides, yes, we want to have a job role, a trade that is particularly specific to, to our needs. Um, I, would, I would discourage um, a proliferation of job roles and I would discourage creating job roles or creating a standard for a narrow job role, because I think this, this does not do the apprentice a favor, because it may in the end nail him down to a particular job role and limit career opportunities. So the main benefit that comes in through the self-creation of job roles under optional trades would probably lie more in the combination of already existing job roles rather than in the creation of um, not yet existing job roles. And the other thing is, of course, um, the reinvention of a wheel is not necessary. And there are also existing job roles under the designated trades. But anyways, um, it's been taken up across sectors. Um, quite significantly, and uh, we'll take a, look at, a quick look at the, at the growth rates also later on. Um, I, want to, I want to explain to you the schemes that we have through which the government of India incentivizes the uptake of apprenticeship. They are directed at the employers or at the establishments that take in apprentices. And NAPS, the scheme, that is administered by NSDC and DGT, DGT for designated trades and NSDC for optional trades, basically means that there is a reimbursement of the stipend cost of 25% and a maximum of rupees 1500 a month. In practice, it means a fixed contribution of 1500 rupees per month. But there's also the possibility to reimburse the cost of basic training, 7,500 rupees is here um, the maximum. Um, this is administered, we've heard it from previous speaker, uh, Colonel Nilesh, um, over, the, over the apprenticeship portal. And it is an easy and flexible way of doing it. And one of the, one of the benefits is that the status of, um, of the reimbursement um, is always visible over the portal to the industry that has submitted their claim for reimbursement. We can go on to the next slide already. Um, the uh, management advantage that uh, I had mentioned earlier is that um, employers or establishments can hire, or if you wish, source out any activities in the context of managing an apprenticeship to an external services provider. And that goes along the life cycle of an apprenticeship from the mobilization and counseling of candidates um, to generating contracts, to arrange basic training, to um, assist establishment in designing the courses under uh, optional trades and get them aligned with the national skills qualification framework to organize cooperative training when several companies are involved um, as the locations of training 
managing contracts, um, registration of the apprenticeships on the portal, which is always required, payment of stipends, and make the claims for reimbursement. Any big company may say, okay, we have a very big human resources department, we may wish to do it ourselves, but especially the smaller ones, the MSMEs find it beneficial to, um, to engage the services of the TPA. And at this point, under MSDE, um, we have 98 TPAs that are impaneled and the number is growing and they do a big service in so far as now already 60% of um, all new contracts do come in under optional trades do come in under, under TPAs. Um, trains we want to look at and how, how optional trades are in fact growing very fast and outpacing the designated trades is if you, if you look at the, at the boy chart on the right first, you see that um, as per the end of January, almost two and a half lakh um, active contracts have been reached in this um, running financial year, as opposed to 1.75 lakh and the year before, has already a growth of uh, over 140%. Um, in the previous periods, we've had big growth. Of course, we started very low in financial year 2018, 2019, when there was only uh, um, less than 15,000 active contracts to um, 81,000 plus contracts to the aforementioned 1.75 lakh. So right now under optional trades, we have more than four lakh cumulative apprenticeship contracts. We have more than 17,000 active establishments that uh, have at least one contract generated. Um, we have um, almost two and a half lakh active contracts in this um, ongoing financial year um, running and going. Um, you may be interested to take a look at the top five sectors. They are retail, automotive, electronics, IT, and banking and financial services. Rubber, plastic chemicals follow a little lower on the rank. Um, I believe they are at uh, the 11th position, but again, the, the growth is good and the uptake in the industry is encouraging. Top five states, I will also point out that these are Maharashtra, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, and Haryana. This may be no surprise to anyone there needs to be an industrial infrastructure for apprenticeship to be successful. And those states and regions um, that are industrially developed are also leading the way for apprenticeship. But let's take a look at the numbers for rubber and chemicals, where we can see that the leading state is Gujarat. We have a company from Gujarat present here today, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Haryana. That may be um, attributed to Apollo, Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh. All in all, we are at the end of the last year at more than 5,000 active contracts and 587 total active establishments. I do hope that the session today encourages industry members to become involved in apprenticeships so that the next time we talk, the number of total active establishments is still higher than the 587 that we see here. To conclude, and again, as I am running over my time, Dipmala may forgive me for this, but I want to show um, the three schemes that the government of India has, which are called NAPS, NATS, and NIM, so that you can make a comparison and also find out what is the right one, what is the best one for your company. NAPS National Apprenticeship Promotion Scheme is the one that I have presented and that I represent, of course, because um, it is implemented by NSDC. And the main feature is 1500 rupees per apprentice per month to offset the cost um, of um, the stipend. And uh, I'm not just advertising my own program, but uh, this, is, uh, this is coming from uh, the heart and from conviction. It is the program that is uh, 
effective, efficient, and very easy to use because it's managed with the help of the Sector Skill Council and administered over the portal. Then there is NAT's National Apprenticeship Training Scheme. It comes under a different ministry, Ministry of Education, and it will reimburse part of the cost of a stipend to an apprentice who already is a degree diploma certificate holder and it is an apprenticeship training. So under the Apprentices Act, both NAPS and NATS participants count as apprentices. This is implemented by Board of Apprenticeship Training. They come in four regions and the cap here is 3000 rupees per month. So the company gets a higher reimbursement, but the target group is limited because it is degree diploma certificate holders. And also there is a time limit of one year. So you cannot avail yourself to it to a period of more than 12 months, whereas apprentices, full apprentices, maybe anything up to 36 months, uh, between six and 36 months in India. Finally, there is the NEEM, National Employment Enhancement Mission. Its participants also count as apprentices under the act. This is um, implemented by AICTE, All India Council for technical education. It's a practical training program for two separate target groups, underskilled, underprivileged groups, and also for post-graduation um, students so that they can find their way into employment. Here, there is no benefit that goes directly to um, a company or to an employer, but what this program does, it sets up um, organizations that are called NIEM facilitators who are to take in the apprentices under NIEM and make them available for training to the companies. So NAPS and NATS would be the ones that um, result in direct benefits and offset costs to employers and establishments. Um, whereas NAPS is good for anyone from the fresher to the, to the graduate uh, apprentice, that's only good for the ones that already have degree diploma certificate um, are, and um, are in the program to ease their transition from university or college into permanent employment. We can skip the next one, Nimala, because uh, that's only a detail of what I have just said. But I want to. Um, Oh, please note the please note the coordinates for contact and feel free to reach out to Sector Skill Council, obviously, but also to NSDC for advice and guidance on how to proceed. Um, to, to go back to the initial question, is um, apprenticeship an effective way? The answer is yes. <laughs> and uh, it's also an efficient way because it reduces cost. And in the survey, yes, it is. Um, applicable or useful in most circumstances. But the biggest benefit comes in under midterm to long-term strategies or HR strategies that companies have. It will not be good to fill um, vacancies immediately. The reason for this is that apprentices will take their time to become fully productive. We have seen that um, this is the case at about 50, about halfway through, um, an apprenticeship into the apprenticeship, and then they reach full productivity. The ultimate benefit in the long term is that apprenticeship leads to the creation of a stable and reliable, loyal workforce, because apprenticeship sets up something like what may be called a psychological contract between the employee and the employer. Um, I, can, I can say this from experience from my own country, Germany, which is considered to be something like the mother country of, a, of apprenticeship, but also Japan and the Toyota model um, of production is also world famous, is that in fact, young people came in, come in after they leave school, that maybe um, after eighth year, 10th year, 12th year, are trained in the trade, and are likely to spend the rest of their work life and their careers in the company that has trained them. That is the psychological bond. It's more 
it's more like a family or a close-knit team. Um, and they're highly suitable for, for companies where the knowledge or the skills that they need to transfer are not explicit ones that can be learned from books, but is tacit or implicit language skills that are in the hands rather than in the brains. Also highly suitable for the young learner who is not the book learner or not the academic learner, but who has his or her talents in learning by doing um, and learning by experience. So if all these things come together, apprenticeship is a great thing for the youth, for the company, and it is effective as well as efficient. And with this, um, I give back to you, Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Mr. Yan, for the detailed report sharing the facts and figures and absolutely stunning. It was indeed a great session wherein all our audiences have got good understanding about the program. And also the most important fact that they got to know how the industries are coming forward and hiding under the scheme for the social benefit. Most such questions are welcome. I guess there is one question that is already being answered by Yen. How can we claim Mm -hmm. Segment payment part. Obviously, over the portal, um, we've heard it. Uh, Colonel um, Nikish has also spoken about it. Um, the um, the evidence that um, the uh, stipend has been paid needs to be uploaded on the portal, and then it will be reimbursed. That is done on a quarterly basis. However. There is the possibility of making the payment to the stipend payment gateway, and then that takes care of itself. So that's a super easy way. But uh, right. go to go to apprenticeshipindia.gov.in. Um, there is FAQs. There are instructional videos. Um, call us, call Sector Skill Council, and we lead you on the uh, on the first steps. But you will yeah. find out it is um, super easy. Yes, definitely. And uh, we will be happy to uh, answer those questions. All the questions are welcomed. They can write us. And uh, they, I'm also sharing the links for all our social media platforms. So you may all connect with us on our social media platforms. Just on the chat, I'm just floating the list, the links of all our social media platforms. Even for those who have missed out, the session today can go to Facebook and check the session. Uh, those, those who are connected, they can follow us on all social media platforms to get the latest information regarding the skilling projects and the various schemes. And we are looking forward to have more sessions and discussions along with the industry experts. On behalf of Team RSP, RCBSTC, I thank you all the participants who have joined our session from across the country and a big thanks to the special guest speakers who have taken out the valuable time for sharing the, their thoughts with us. Uh, thank you, Nile. Thank you, Deepa. Thanks, Deepmala. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Maheshwaranji. Thank you, thank you, Deepa. Thank you, Yan, for sharing. My pleasure. Yes. Success and good luck to all. Thank in you. Steps in apprenticeship. Yes. So that has recently changed. And these are the email IDs that we have from the regional members and the industry uh, connects from the RCP STC officials. So those who wants to connect with the regional manager also they can connect directly. And on the chat, I have written all our social media platform links. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, sir.